Duna did not present his viewpoint clearly in the Middle Treatise, and scholars have been perplexed about his position. For instance, in Chapter 26 of the Middle Treatise he described the twelve chains of causal conditions, all sentient beings are deluded by ignorance and hence have caused three kinds of action. Since various actions arise, the sentient beings, go through six forms of life. Since it is conditioned by various kinds of action, the consciousness establishes itself with respect to six forms of life. Since consciousness is established, name and form are instilled. Since name and form are instilled, the six sense faculties arise. Through a combination of objects, qualities and discernments, six touches evolve. Since six touches evolve, three feelings arise. Since three feelings arise, desire is produced. Through desire are four clingings produced, and through the clinging perceptions being is generated. If the perceiver has no clinging perception, he will be freed and there will be no being. From being birth arises, and from birth old age and death arise. From old age and death, misery, grief, despair, and disturbance arise. These various things arise from birth. So owing to the twelve chains of causal conditions, great sufferings are produced. The so-called wheel of life and death is the source of all actions. The ignorant creates it, but the wise does not. By the cessation of each component, each subsequent link will not arise. The accumulation of sufferings is thus completely extinguished. The teaching is quite different from the message in the previous chapters of the Middle Treatise, and has the appearance of Hinayana thought. Kenneth K. Inada who has translated the Mulamadhyaya Makarika, comments upon the chapter. In this chapter and the final one to follow, Nagarjuna goes into the analysis of Hinayanistic doctrines. The present chapter discusses the twelvefold causal analysis which is the basis of the endless process of suffering incurred by all living beings. The discussion is Hinayanistic and it reveals that the source of trouble lies in ignorance which in turn initiates all kinds of mental conformations. The discussion of the doctrine of causal analysis indicates the strong influence of Hinayanistic or Abhidharmic teachings during this period. The teaching here has puzzled many scholars, how do we interpret it? What was Nagarjuna's real view concerning the twelve chains of causal conditions? Did he become a Hinayanist at the end of writing the Middle Treatise? It seems that these questions can be solved by study of the Twelve Gate Treatise where Nagarjuna clearly presented his view of the Twelve Chains of Causal Conditions in the first chapter, and demonstrated that the Twelve Chains cannot be conceived as the causal law of the world. He used a scriptural passage from the Seventy Treatise to introduce his standpoint, Twelve Chains of Causal Conditions really have no production. If they have production, do they have it in one mind moment or in many mind moments? Nagarjuna argued that if the twelve chains of causal conditions are the real causal law of the world, they must happen or be produced in one mind moment, or in many mind moments. But one cannot say that all twelve causal factors appear in one mind moment, for if they occur in one mind moment, then causes and effects would happen at the same time. This is impossible because a cause must be prior to an effect. Nor can one say that the twelve appear in many mind moments, for if they occur in different mind moments, they would be distinct and have no particular relation to each other. Each would occur with a particular mind moment, then disappear with that mind moment. If so, how can any of them be a causal condition? Thus, both cases and cannot be established, and hence the twelve chains of causal conditions cannot be conceived as the real interna. Causal law, they are empty. Nagarjuna's definitive view is presented in the Twelve Gate Treatise. This explains in part why the Twelve Gate Treatise is valuable for knowing Madhyamaka thought and also why Sanluan masters insisted that one should study the book. Recently some scholars question whether Nagarjuna was really a Mahayana Buddhist and whether he had ever read the Prajnaparamita Sutras. For the middle treatise does not mention the words Mahayana and Prajnaparamita Sutra. A. K. Warder argues, the doctrine of the Buddha, according to Nagarjuna, consists essentially of the four truths and conditioned origination. There are no terms peculiar to the Mahayana. There is no evidence that Nagarjuna had ever seen any Prajnaparamita text. 
For him the most you important canonical text is the Nidana Samyuktamodam students have sometimes supposed that he is criticizing early Buddhism, or the early schools, in order to set up Mahayana instead. Is there any truth in this supposition? We have already pointed out that there is nothing overtly Mahayanist in the MK. Even in its deeper implications there seems to be nothing distinctively Mahayanist in this reading of the Nidana Samyukta. It is not early Buddhism which is being attacked. One who reads the Twelve Gate Treatise will have cause to dispute this thesis, the opening statement clears away our doubts. The text describes itself as a concise summary of Mahayana teachings, and Nagarjuna begins with seven reasons why Mahayana is superior to Hinayana, each of them a discussion of the word great, as in, this is the vehicle which is ridden by Buddhas and great men, and hence is called great. Again, in the Prajna Sutra, the Buddha himself says that the teachings of Mahayana are immeasurable and boundless. For this reason it is called great.